What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode. This is episode number 37. We start season start by officially looking at our fixtures for February on the back of our transfer deadline day signing of Adam Ola, Lookman and our big 6-0 win over Norwich. As you can see, speaking of Lookman, we were one of his former clubs, Everton away at Goodison Park. Chelsea at home starts the month in the biggest West London derby of this series so far. Sandwiched in between that, another London derby against Patrick Vieira's Crystal Palace is struggling to keep their heads above water. And then we only end the month with an FA Cup last 16 clash. Yeah, you know, nothing too serious. Yeah, last 16 of the FA Cup, a chance to reach the quarterfinals for the second year in three. We're away, Kenilworth Road, Luton Town. For the first game of all four in today's episode, it was indeed, as I referred to it there, the biggest West London derby of the series. And I'm not over-exaggerating. Absolutely no way. This is the biggest one of this series right now. Us and Chelsea and Arsenal and Everton and several teams right now desperately trying to keep their Champions League dreams alive. Away, Stamford Bridge. Beat the reverse fixture by two goals to In the past two seasons, both times we've come here, we've lost. What do we need in this game? Composure, concentration. Unfortunately, had none of that in the opening eight minutes. Yeah, Chelsea won, Brentford nil, and the worst possible start to West London. Oh, it's so frustrating as well. It's just a simple ball put into our box. We've got three centre-halves and a couple of wing-backs, and no one deals with it. Sean tries to take it down. A couple of bobbles, misses it. Then Rico Henry takes a stab at it, deflects it into the path of Lukaku, misses the following challenge, and the Belgian turns in from close range. That is such a sloppy, scrappy goal to concede. And it's the first one at the West London Derby. Chelsea in front, eight minutes in, and 15 minutes into the game, they doubled their lead. Chelsea two, Brentford nil. Callum Hudson-Odoi getting a start and repaying his manager's trust. Chelsea two goals up, and I was thinking, OK, if we don't get a foothold in this game half an hour in, we're done. We're finished. Now, it not be for a great save by David Rea. Denying Kai Havertz, we would have been 3 0 down half an hour in. Incredible stop by the Spaniard, but we were all at sea defensively. But it's not a surprise. We've been like this for most of the season. Yes, we've improved a bit defensively since the campaign's gone on, but for the most part, it's not been our defense while we are where we are right now. It's that we've got one of the best goal scoring records in the division, and Brian Mbuemo cannot stop scoring. It's another one for Mbuemo having his best season of the save and gets us back in the game. Just a couple minutes after. Raya kept us in the match. What a turnaround. Could have gone 3-0 down. Game would have been done. But instead, deficit halved courtesy of an incredible Embuemo strike. What a way to go into the break. Deficit half back in the game and we don't give up. 20 minutes to go. Still down by a goal. Needed a second one. And as the silver plays through Gutierrez, he holds off Diego and smacks it past Mendy to give us the equaliser. Brentford 2-0 down at Stamford Bridge. Battle back to level it, courtesy of Embuemo and the goal machine. A thriller in West London. Chelsea 2, Brentford 2, but the game was not done yet. Momentum could still go either way. Chelsea going to get back in front directly after our leveller. Lukaku continues to sting me. Off lows to Kai and Havertz. Drills it. Top bins. Raya rooted to the spot. Effortless from the German. And that would be the game winner. Chelsea 3, Brentford 2. And it just it just happened in a flash. You know, we found the level through Gutierrez. And then the second afterwards, Havertz makes it 3-2. And that was how the game would. You see the, 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 the reaction come full time as well. It was such a frustrating game to lose because... Really, there wasn't much in it. There weren't actually that many chances. Chelsea probably were slightly the better team, but it could have gone either way, really. But I think the problems laid bare for all to see once again. Yes, we picked up the clean sheet against the Canaries in the previous game, but, you know, we've got 50 goals this season. Joint top scorers, only Liverpool are tied with us with 50 goals this season. They're leading the league. We can score so many. We've hit the 50 that the board target for us at the start of the season already. But it's defensively that I just cannot cope at times in this game. 3-2 the final score. Chelsea win the big one. And we drop to 7th 
in the table. And after that, the English FA said, mate, do you want the England job? And I was like, go on, go away, go away, for goodness sake, mate. I'm trying to qualify for the Champions League. I ain't got time for this. Can we wreck? See what Gareth's up to, because I ain't got the time for this. I'm trying to get Brentford in the top four. So following game, drop into seventh, Crystal Palace, another London derby. Right now in 16th place, struggling to keep their heads above water. Well, seven minutes into the game. It's three goals in as many games for Brian and Buemo. Coming alive, I've talked about it. Transitioning takes a long time. You've got to be patient and you've got to trust the process. And Buemo is now coming good in that attacking midfield role. Opens the scoring, kneeing in a Stanley Young cross. And then eight minutes after the restart, this is a really scrappy goal. But he doesn't mind how they go in so long as they do. Ivan Tony still leading the race for the golden boot. Ships it into the back of the net. Brentford 2, Crystal Palace. Now, and after that, Palace played this like really high press game where like everyone just came into our area basically and pushed us back as far as we could get. And that is such a difficult thing to do against this side. And why? Because we've got so much pace going forward. All we've got to do is get in behind the back line. Forget about it. It's over. So Palace really ballsy with that style of play. But you can see for the third goal where Young turned in the Embuemo cut back. It was the same for the fourth goal. Yeah, spoilers here with three and a half minutes to go. They played this really high press game. And as Gutierrez runs through, who's going to catch Roberto? Dude's rapid. Absolutely rapid. 4-0 Brentford. We wrap up the game there courtesy of Roberto. And that would do it. You can't you can't play a high press game against this Brentford team. It's not gonna work. We're too quick. Once we get in behind, you're finished. Brentford four, Crystal Palace nil. Two goals later on through Stanley and the goal machine and a dominant display against Patrick Vieira side. And that's how you pick yourself up there. Massive loss at Chelsea. Psychologically it hurt a lot, but that's how you respond. So that win there puts us back into fifth. We're level with Arsenal on goal difference in sixth and one clear of Man City in sixth. Uh, sorry, in seventh even. As for the top four though, Everton currently occupying a Champions League spot. Our third of four games today, it was the Toffees away at Goodison Park. Win this game and we could bay back it bay. We could be back in the Champions League places with 11 games to go. No pressure. Massive game for both teams. Neither could afford to lose to the other. Both knew what a win could do. First chance fell early. Seven minutes in. The former Spurs and MK Dons midfielder Deli Ali goes for goal. Ray makes the save and keeps it at 0-0. And that was it for a very tense and cagey first half as you'd expect. Very nervy indeed. Not much to report. But 10 minutes after the restart. 56 minutes in. Going for our first chance of the game. Oh he just can't stop scoring. He's on fire. Brian and Buema. I told you. I believe he's going to come good. And in the third season, he has four goals in as many games for our number 19. Everton nil, Brentford won. Another assist for Stanley and Brentford in front at Goodison. This result here could put us in the top four. So I was going to sit on the one goal lead. I know we can't defend, so let's keep on attacking and go for more. Stanley denied by Pickford as it was still 1-0 an hour in. But in the second half, it was all Brentford. Everton looked shell-shocked. Ten minutes to go, a chance to double it. On Yaker, De Silva spots Stanley out wide. First time ball, catches to Debo sleeping. And Tony drills it in with the weaker left foot. And at this point, I was going absolutely ballistic. Everton nil, Brentford 2. The shocker surely clinches it for the Bees and gives us the three points that should put us back in the top four. With a minute and a half to go, Everton keep their chance alive. Kakare turns in this corner. But I've got to be honest here. Tariq Lamptey, mate, what are you doing? He just backs away from the ball and lets it go past Ray. I can only assume he thought that Dave was going to get a glove on it and didn't want to kick his hand. So he just left the ball. Such a frustrating goal to concede. But one of those things, hey, surely it's too little too late, right? We're into stoppage time. We're still leading by one. The job is surely done. A minute of stoppage time to go. Fagan, Walker off the bench. Brought on, secure the points. Oh, no, 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 no. Absolutely choked it. Absolutely bottled it. Everton put me under pressure. I tried to pass out of Fagan Walcott. The pass to Flex. Moreno finds Diaz. And Deli Alley, who missed a golden chance in the early stages, doesn't miss twice. Absolutely fuming with myself. Just hoof it, hoof the ball. Why did I hoof the ball? It's one of those moments where, like, I saw it coming as soon as it happened. You know what I mean? As soon as I went to release the ball, I was like, 
Okay, this is going to deflect. Everton are going to get it back. Everton are going to score. And I had no one else but myself to blame. I can't believe it. Absolutely choked it. And you know me, man. Like, I don't I don't rage. I don't get frustrated. I don't get angry. This was the exception. I was absolutely livid with myself at the end of this game. I literally gripped the controller so much. I thought I was going to break it. I thought I'd need to order a new one. But thankfully, it's okay. But my feelings weren't. I totally choked it and got no one else but myself to blame. Trying to play out with the back of Fagan Walker. Just hoof it. Hoof it into the stands. Hoof it into Rose Ed instead. Gifted Everton one late chance. They took it. 2-2. Two -two. And what a throwaway. One of the biggest bottles of this series, if not the biggest bottle so far. We should be in the top four. Instead, the draw keeps us outside of it. So following game, championship side Luton Town away, Kenilworth Road, FA Cup last 16. Just one win in our last three games, but a chance to reach the last state for the second time in three years. And yes, five minutes in, a wanted redemption. I don't know if you guys are the same as me, but like when you've, when you've come on the back of a result where you either bottled it or you should have won but didn't, or you lost badly. You just you just sort of play with like fire and look for revenge. This was just one of those games. Five minutes in, Adam Ola looked man. First goal for the club to signing on deadline day. And then 31 minutes in. Oh, get in, baby. Daniel Wass in his final season in pro football. Retiring at the end of the year. First goal in a Brentford shirt. Waits until he's about to retire before getting it. But what's that old saying? If you're going to score your first goal for your new club, make it a memorable one. One of the goals of the season. No doubt about it from the vet. I love Dane, man. I'm gutted he's retiring. Barely gets a game nowadays. When he does play, he does really well. But gets our second goal. Tune it up. And then just past the Almark, chance to make it free. Jay Jones off the bench. Sends it over the top. Ivan Tony runs onto it. And the former Peterborough strikers link up together. Tony assisted by what was supposed to be his protege, runs onto it and drills it in on the half volley. Luton nil, Brentford free, and that would do it. So just like in the Crystal Palace game, going for revenge on the back of the poor result in the last one. Big 3-0 victory, and there it is. We celebrate come the full-time whistle. We are into the FA Cup quarterfinal for the second year in free. Heading in to the last eight, coming to full-time whistle. We all played on the Wednesday night, so I saw the scores, and I saw that there are a couple of championship sides still remaining. Sheffield United, who just knocked out Spurs, and my team, Millwall, who just thrashed Gillingham. And I was thinking, surely we've got another, not we've got another lower league side again. Surely it ends here in the quarterfinal. Surely. Well, who have we got in the FA Cup quarterfinal? It's Millwall! It is indeed! I'm heading home, I'm going to the dead Millwall in the FA Cup quarterfinal. Liverpool versus Arsenal, Leeds versus Manchester United, Aston Villa versus Sheffield United. The other tasty ties, but we've got them. The Lions' Den is where we're heading. It's going to be a tough one though. Millwall have got a great record in the FA Cup in the past decade or so. A couple of Wembley appearances, really good runs, and now we've got them. The Lions, Millwall in the FA Cup quarterfinal, and a chance to reach. Wembley. But that was this episode of Karima, guys. Big thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for that next episode. The FA Cup quarterfinal, the London Derby, at the Lions Den, Millwall, very soon.